forty dollars. This is Paul. Thank you for uh, giving me a minute. I know you guys are busy. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, you know, the, during this campaign, there have been a lot of things said about your husband, uh, the, 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 the misstatements, the things that they've accused him of. As a wife, uh, how have you been able to uh, to deal with that best? Well, first of all, I know they're not true, so they're number one. It is hard to have someone uh, criticize uh, your husband, but Ron always says, well, that's just part of their disease. So that's the doctor coming out right. and he tells us that. But uh, What's his diagnosis for the cure? <laughs> well, you know, he's um, Ron is a very um, forgiving type person. Uh, now, never, I might not be. <laughs> the protective wife. Well, I've never seen him attack person. One of the one of the uh, most amazing traits about this campaign is how is how he has stayed above the fray. Um, yes. The, the personal Ron attacks. Ron doesn't like to ever attack people. He likes to attack the ideas, and there's certain ideas, you know, of freedom that uh, I mean, he says. Um, Freedom and liberty are so important that if we had a calamity today and had freedom, uh, we could pick it back up again because there's so much love for our country in the hearts of people. It's grown a little bit weak, but we want to build it up again so that they'll be able to handle all the problems that they're going to face. Right. They've been handed down from them from other generations. How did it make you feel when, uh, when George Stephanopoulos um, gave such a low blow to him in the interview? I think that's part of TV. I don't think George, uh, he may have believed at that time, but I think there's just probably a little bit in the back of his head now thinking, well, maybe I was wrong. Yeah, he, yeah uh, the, I remember after the first debate um, when the Michigan, the head of the GOP in Michigan, and I don't remember his name, but he got on with Hannity and Cole just said that um, that Ron Paul was finished. Right, right. I, I'd love to, you know. Well, that really upset our uh, grandson. Uh, we have a 17-year-old grandson who has really followed a lot of uh, what's been going on, and he uh, cornered that gentleman at a, another debate uh, after after the second one and after South Carolina. he came out so far ahead. And uh, he said, you know, you said uh, to stick a fork in my grandpa, he was done. He says, do you think that today? And the, he didn't want to talk to uh, Mark. And uh, finally he says, well, no, he said, oh, I guess it was after the Baltimore debate we talked to him. And uh, this was... Um, uh, a good debate, and some didn't attend, but Ron did, thought it was very important. And he said, no, he says, uh, because uh, Ron Paul was willing to come out and talk to my people, he said, I realized that he's, uh, you know, a, a good man, and he said, I always thought he was a good man, but, you know, I didn't know, didn't think he could win, uh, but I think he changed his mind. I mean, they're not walking around today saying, yes, Ron Paul is going to win, but they are walking around and saying, Ron Paul is a force, and this is the beginning and that people are so uh, enthused with the message. Well, okay, a year into this now, not quite a year, um, I noticed even last weekend we had the caucus in Nevada and then the primaries in South Carolina. And as many people have noted through YouTube videos and articles written by independent journalists, um, CNN, Fox, the mainstream media, were showing the numbers, showing Ron Paul in second place in Nevada and then throwing up McCain's picture or an interview with Giuliani. Oh, I know. What, what's the reaction inside the campaign to that still happening today? Well, we just say more of the same, but it's only going to hurt them in the end. It's not going to hurt Ron. People, people who've not been aware of Ron Paul, when they start to check him out and they're saying, why is it that he can't get publicity? Why is it he can't get the same media? They're afraid. They're afraid of that message. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people that, that I'm talking to about this message and about this this um, movement, and they'll say, well, let me go check it out. I mean, I work with the, the Navy base in Nash in uh, New Orleans doing doing work there, and I, so I've talked to the, the COs and the other people there at the Navy base, and when I tell them about Ron Paul and they go check him out, they're on board. They say, it's amazing. Yeah, this and, is true. And they said, why can't we find anything in mainstream media? And I said, that's the quest I want you to go on, look for it. Because as they discover that question, they're finding the same thing I am. When you're in charge, when you're in charge, you don't want to give up the reins. Right. You know, and Ron thinks the people should be in charge. You know, yes, you need uh, a leader every four years, you know, but uh, a leader, not a dictator. Well, how does it feel to you to be followed around the country by a blimp? 
Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, that bloom is really something. When we saw it in South Carolina up in those beautiful blue skies, it's very impressive. And it's a lovely billboard. Uh, a flying billboard. Yes, you know, you've heard of walking billboards, but it's, it's a flying billboard. You know, it's it's very it's really something. And there's also uh, we have a, a Ron Paul limo that's traveling around the country, and it has oh it's I don't know it's really long. It's uh, we saw it just last week. Really? And somebody um, I think uh, Limo Ball is the man that owns it. And uh, it's fantastic. It's a big long limo. It has Ron's picture on it, and he signed it. So it's, um, it's very interesting. When, when you see the uh, the other candidates' wives being interviewed, I know you, you you're way above being jealous about that, but I guess that falls in in, in the same I line. I haven't with, really seen them. 